Hey there, Rule Breaker. It's Courtney here from RuleBreakersClub.com. And the topic that I want to tackle today is one that I notice a lot of you are struggling with, and that is the fear of putting yourself out there. I work with students in one of my signature programs, Yay for Clients, who are creating really kick-ass services to put out into the world. And what I've noticed is that it's not not having the strategies that's holding them back because they have all the strategies in the program, it's the fear of what's gonna happen when they take that step. It's the irrational thoughts about what's gonna happen when you publish your website, start blogging, put your services out there, contact someone and ask for something. I'm gonna give you some tools today for how to tackle that fear when it comes up because what I want you to know is that I totally deal with these fears as well. In fact, right now as I'm recording this video, I'm going through an up-leveling time in my business where I'm realizing that I've been afraid to put myself out there in a new way. Yes, I've gotten comfortable with being on video because I've been doing it for many years, though when I started, it was extremely uncomfortable for me. But now that I've you know, more or less mastered the video in the sense of that I do it a lot and I feel comfortable, I've realized that there's other ways that I'm not putting myself out there in my business that are holding me back. So I'm gonna tackle these five things or so with right alongside you. The first thing that I want to remind you is that you know more than other people about your topic. So even if you're not the master best in the world, like professional certified PhD candidate, whatever Oscar winner for your specific topic or industry, you know enough to help other people. Now there's a few sides of this. Number one, you need to know that what comes easily for you is excruciatingly painful and difficult for someone else. Just today I met with my accountant and we talked talked about this because he went to my website and he's like, wow, I really like how you've, you know, you're marketing yourself and you're branding. Like I could never do that. And I was like, well, I could never like do accounting for myself. I have an intense fear of numbers. So we all have strengths that are amazing to other people, including you. Yes, you, you have them. The other side of this is that it's actually best for you to help people who are only a few steps behind you because you can easier, more easily empathize with their, where those people are, which means that you're going to be a better teacher for them. It's really important when you're teaching someone how to do something or helping people to do something that you understand their frustrations. I'm sure you've had a teacher in the past who was speaking totally over your head and didn't realize that you were like completely lost and you just were not communicating well. This is what happens when the teacher is way too ahead of the student. Now, there's ways to overcome that it doesn't mean that you can never teach people who are like way behind you, quote unquote, but that where you are right now is enough to help people who are a few steps behind and that you might be the best person to help those people at this point. The second thing I wanna remind you of is that nobody's gonna visit your website when you launch it. I think entrepreneurs get this crazy idea in their heads that when they launch their website, it's gonna be like Steve Jobs launching a new iPhone and that like millions of people and like CNN's gonna be talking about it and like they're gonna get calls and interviews and windfalls of requests from clients. And what I want you to know is that your mom is probably the only person who's gonna visit your website or someone like that, someone in your family. If you go to look on your Google Analytics and you're like, oh my God, somebody's on my website right now. It's probably you. I'm not saying this to beat you down. I'm saying this to give you a little dose of reality that these things don't happen all at once. You're not gonna be an overnight success. You're gonna have time to get used to the baby steps of putting yourself out there. The third thing I wanna talk to you about is considering the worst case scenario. I've gotten really into stoicism lately and basically the idea or the takeaway that I've gotten from the stoics is that you just need to prepare for the worst case scenario. Like, what if the most terrible thing in the world happens? you're gonna be okay. So I encourage you to really sit there and think about that. What are you truly, really honestly afraid is going to happen to you if you do the thing that's scaring you? Yeah, maybe someone will reject you. Maybe someone you admire will reject you. So what? You'll keep going. That's your decision. You get to keep going. 
Maybe worst case scenario is that it does take you down for a few days, maybe even like a couple of weeks. Well, then you'll get back up again and you'll keep going. If you resolve to never quit, there's truly nothing that can break you. The fourth thing I wanna to talk to you about is baby steps. So I kinda of touched on this in point number two, nobody's gonna visit your website, but that I want you to proactively take baby steps to step outside of your comfort zone every single day. I love this idea uh, that Tim Ferriss has that you should put yourself in like awkward situations as much as you can to show yourself that it's totally fine. So he says that sometimes he wears like crazy pants or like a crazy outfit outside that he feels kind of uncomfortable with. And by doing that realizes like nobody actually cares that I'm wearing crazy pants right now. And even if somebody does care, like again, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Now you don't have to go wear crazy pants. What I want you to consider is if you have a fear of talking to people, maybe what you need to do is just strike up a conversation with your barista the next time you go get your almond milk latte. Just take one little step every single day and before you know it, you're gonna be doing things that right now are outside of your wildest dreams. Finally, step five is my action step for you. I want you to share your fear with other people. It's when we hide and keep our fears quiet and inside that we start to develop shame about our fears. So maybe your fear is that people will see that you're a fraud or that you're really not as good as you think you are, which is really the same thing. Ultimately, all of our fears boil down to one thing, which is the fear of not being enough. So if you're up for it, I would love for you to just come down to the comments below this video over at rulebreakersclub.com and let me know, what is your biggest, most irrational, silliest fear of moving on to the next step or doing that thing, uh, the next thing about putting yourself out there? We're all here to help each other, cheer each other on, and we'll show you that you're not the only one with that fear and that you can totally take action anyway. I hope you love this video and I will see you in the comments.